Welcome to At Your Pace Online's course on changes to NFPA 70 2020, the National Electrical Code. My name is Chuck Price and I'll be your instructor. As you know, the NEC is constantly undergoing changes due to new technologies and the retirement of others. Concerns for safety and workmanship constantly influence new changes as well. These influences contributed to this edition. During the last three-year code cycle, there were over 3,500 public proposals for changes submitted. This resulted in about 1,400 suggested code revisions, almost 200 more than in the previous cycle. Each of the 18 code-making panels are made up of working electricians and inspectors, manufacturers, and researchers. They review each input for worth and relevance and compile them into a first draft. Then the first draft is made available for public input. After those responses, about 700 proposed changes made it to the second draft, and most were formally adopted. Some had a few additional revisions made and then a final review by the correlating committee. This course won't address every single change. Many changes that were similar occurred in several sections, and it doesn't make sense to discuss them over and over. So we'll pick one and then mention in a side note where similar changes were made in the code. Instead, we'll be addressing the significant changes that will impact our trade. The course is divided into eight segments. Each one covers a single chapter, except for one that covers two chapters. The course covers about 230 significant changes to the 2020 NEC. Some of the changes affect numerous articles or influence the entire NEC, while others are more limited in scope. Where a change has a wide impact in our industry, we'll cover it in greater depth. By the time you're done, you'll have a good awareness of what's been changed and how it affects your work. Now, here's some background on me. I've been involved in the electrical industry for over 20 years and have been a licensed journeyman electrician for more than 15 of them. In 1997, I began my electrical apprenticeship. During that time, I worked on many types of electrical installations that allowed me to become well-versed in the trade. After my apprenticeship, I was quickly promoted to foreman and began managing accounts and running various jobs. All this gave me the experience I needed to expand my career. I've worked in many different aspects of the electrical trade, from wiring and remodeling new homes to hospital construction, which included the installation of two MRI suites. I've also installed gas stations with car washes and convenience stores. As a part of my experience, I also installed traffic signals and street lighting. This type of electrical work required me to closely follow strict local and state guidelines as well as NEC requirements. Beyond that, I've also worked in gas plants, water treatment facilities, phone company server and distribution rooms, and schools and colleges. I'm currently employed at my area's regional medical center. Let's talk for a minute about how the material will be presented. We'll give you a clear view of each change by providing both a snapshot and an in-depth look at the details. We'll also focus on what it means to you in the field. We'll use the following format. An introduction to the change with an illustration, then a headline of the kind of change it is, like a new section or subsection, or a revision to the existing code language, and a thumbnail description of what's been changed. Then we'll have a brief summary of the change. We'll follow that with the text of the 2020 NEC along with any deletions from the 2017 NEC by crossing out deleted words and with a clearly shown cut and paste overlay of any new language that's been added to the new code. Finally, we'll discuss what the change means and the reason it was installed in the code. We'll also provide links to more information when it helps. During the course, you'll also be presented with questions. These are used to verify your participation in the class. They're also a good teaching tool by letting you use the information right away. If you have a copy of the 2020 NEC, keep it handy. It'll be helpful for you in answering questions or for filling in any information we didn't have the time to present. Also, if at any point in a lesson you have a question or concern, feel free to leave a comment or question in the suggestion box. Now, let's look at how the NEC is constructed and also go through terms we'll be using to describe the different kinds of provisions when I discuss them. The NEC begins by dividing the codes into chapters. Each chapter covers a broad topic, encompassing every aspect of that topic, such as equipment for general use. The last chapter, chapter nine, houses the tables. Each chapter is then divided into articles. 
These are the broad aspects within that larger topic, such as Article 450, Transformers and Transformer Vaults, which is a type of equipment for general use. Some articles are divided into parts. The codes within each part often apply only within that part. For example, where a part applies to circuits rated 1000 volts or more, the provisions of that part only apply to those applications and not to circuits rated lower than 1000 volts. We'll always list the part if it's a factor, so pay attention to that term. The next level down is the section. Each section is a significant topic. It may be all contained in one paragraph or broken into subdivisions, also called subsections. Subsections bear the number of the section followed by a letter or number or both. Higher level subsections will also have a title. The final subdivision within a section is the list. These are shown as lowercase letters or numbers. List items are conditions that must be met either in total, where all the list items must be fulfilled, or individually, where each list item is an optional condition to be met. Within each section, there might also be an exception. The exception removes the obligation to adhere to some or all of the section, usually when specific conditions are met. Exceptions are in italics, and where the exception only applies to a subsection or list item, it follows that subsection or list item directly. Some sections will also have an informational note. These are not mandatory provisions, but point the user to resources needed to follow best practices for this section. Informational notes are indented and in smaller font. Some sections might also refer to a table that provides specifics on how to apply that code section in the field or refer you to other sections for guidance, which the NEC prefers to do rather than repeat the text over and over. That's all you need to know about me and this course. After a brief question, we'll give you a short overview of how the 2020 NEC has changed.